It's always the Mondays after break that seem to be the longest. I Ayekwe Naknao Malita and this is my channel The Midnight Librarian and today I will be talking about my November wrap up. Now for the month of November I had attempted to participate in Indigathon. Uh, Indigathon is a read month long readathon in November for Native American Heritage Month created by Brody at Etu Brody and Michelle from Thor Wants Another Letter. There was a bingo card for, full of prompts. There were uh, challenges, vlog challenges, um, Instagram challenges, Twitter sprints, and some of those came with um, giveaways and prizes. So it was ultimately really great. Um, I say attempted because of course I didn't quite follow my TBR. So just as a refresher, this was my TBR for Indigathon and I did not complete all of them. <laughs> But we'll get into that. Still, I read eight books for the month, which is pretty good. I feel like I am pretty happy with that. Let's get into my stats. So like I said, I read eight books. Two were young adult, six were adult, four were mystery thrillers, one sci-fi dystopian, one sci-fi fantasy, one graphic novel fantasy, and one historical fantasy. With those eight books, I read 2,178 six pages. Out of those books I have, in terms of ratings, I have one one star, zero two stars, one three star, four four stars, and one four point five star, and zero five stars. I, there is one that I haven't rated yet just because I feel like I need to delve more into the series before actually giving it a rating. But that gives my average rating for the month of November at 3.5 stars. In terms of own voices. I do have have four own voices, four indigenous authored books. Every I think everyone else is is white, is white or unknown. I don't I couldn't find anything on it. So like I said, I didn't quite follow my TBR though. I did. I I feel more accomplished with this TBR than I have with any of my others. So I'm not counting it as a loss really, though I could have done better. I know that. And when it comes to going into starting to head into the winter months, I do very much start getting more into mystery, thriller, true crime-ish books. And um, they were available to me through my library. And even though a lot of these books that I had originally on my Indigathon TBR would have fit that easily, they weren't available through my library. So that was a bummer. And I know that uh, I particularly listen to quite a few books during the month um, as I do things around the house, as I work. Um, it's just easier for me. Um, I do read physically. However, it tends to be at a slower pace and therefore I don't get as much um, physical reading done as I would like to. The first book I finished this month worked out great. It wasn't originally on my Intergathon TBR, but I'm glad I was able to fit it on there. And that was Future Home of the Living God by Louise Erdrich. I am not going to talk too much about this because I just put up my full video review for this. If you want to check it out, I will link it above in the cards. And I believe it's over here um, and the description down below. This book follows Cedar Songmaker. She is Ojibwe. However, she was adopted out to a white couple at, when she was younger. Now she is 26 and she is four months pregnant. In a time where society is kind of crumbling, um, scientists suspect that evolution is going backwards as there is a high mortality rate in pregnancies, uh, particularly with the babies and the mother. As Cedar finds out she is four months pregnant, she uh, gets a hold of her birth family and goes and visits them. Society is kind of crumbling apart. Um, women, pregnant women are being snatched up by local governmental groups as government starts to disintegrate completely. Communities create their own governmental groups, usually based off religion. And people start uh, kidnapping pregnant women for their own good. So, um, the father of her of Cedar's baby tries to hide her as well as um, her adoptive family and her birth family try to help her out as well. Like I said, I'm not going to talk too much about this. I will say that this book still has me thinking. It brought up a lot of interesting discussion points in terms of if society starts crumbling, where would I go? Um, if U.S. currency is no longer valid, what would I have to trade instead. Um, Cedar does uh, a really smart thing, I think, and goes and empties out her bank accounts and 
all goes and buys uh, booze and cigarettes for trade. And I'm like, that's brilliant, actually. Um, so just certain things like that. But I also give credit to this book for making me feel panicky. Um, this book and a couple of others have made me um, feel trapped in terms of taking the protagonist's uh, will away. Uh, they make them feel helpless, trapped, um, just completely closed off from people. And I applaud authors that can make me feel like freaked out by this despite not liking the experience of it. But the narration of this, I didn't quite like. I speak more to that in my review, as well as I didn't connect very well with Cedar herself. Um, there are just certain things that didn't sit well with me. But ultimately, I gave this book uh, three stars. Louise, um, I was sitting on it for a while from three to 3.5, as I do keep thinking about it. But three stars, I feel like, isn't that bad um, of a rating for me. It's very much in the middle of just like, I liked it, but there were some things I had problems with. So, um, and from what I hear, this is my first Louise Erdrich book. Um, and from what I hear, this is fairly different from her other works. So I do plan on reading more of her works um, in the future. The next book I read was a continuance from my October TBR, and that was Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant, aka Sean and Maguire. This book follows a research vessel as it goes up to goes over to the Marianas Trench. I keep thinking it's over by Alaska, and it's not. <laughs> it's over on the Western Pacific um, side of the ocean. So search vessel is going in search of uh, figuring out what had happened to um, a boat, a vessel that had gone um, to that spot years before. It was by, um, by the same company. They had originally gone to make a mockumentary about mermaids, but something ended up attacking the vessel and leaving the vessel completely abandoned um, with no life. Everyone was gone. So on this current research vessel that's going to figure out what had happened to the um, what happened to the first boat uh, is Victoria. Victoria's sister was on the first one, and she wants answers to why her to her sister's disappearance. She knows that her sister is more than likely dead. Um, however, she still just she has a bunch of questions. She wants to be able to answer them, and she wants to be able to give clarity to her parents. We follow her perspective as well as a couple others. I love the diversity in this book. Um, I thought it was really well written. However, I do want to note I am not bisexual. I am not deaf. So I just want to put that out there that uh, despite me thinking that they are good representations, I am not those things. Please seek out all voice reviewers. Otherwise, I enjoy the diversity in here. I also really enjoy the marine biography aspect. Um, that was one of the things that I had a passion for going into college. I did really like a lot of aspects of this book. Um, particularly, I really enjoyed the pacing. Um, it felt like it was leading up to something big. However, at a certain point in the book, I looked at how many pages I had left and realized that the big thing had already happened and was a little let down. So I don't know if it was me overhyping this book because it was one that I was really excited for. Um, it, I just felt like it could have had more of a punch to it. Um, I also felt like it could have been a little longer. I did find the elements of it really creepy. Um, it was very kind of like sci-fi slashery. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I very much enjoyed it. It was just, it disappointed me um, in terms of just content of like, I wanted something bigger. I did give this four out of five stars though, as um, I may pick up the second one to this. I hear it's not necess necessary, but I'm I'm interested. This next book is another book of the month. Um, the Future Home for the Living Gods was, or Living God was the first book of the month book um, on this list. I received it in 2017. This one I received before that. <laughs> and it's one of my goals to read more book of the month books that I have received because I am terrible at keeping up with those. So 
but this one is from 2016 and that is The Couple Next Door by Sherry Lapina. This book follows a young couple, Anne and Marco. They go to a dinner party next door and with the intention of checking in on their six month old daughter every half hour on the half hour mark as well as they have a baby monitor to make sure that she's okay and that she's still sleeping. However, when they return from this dinner party, they realize that their daughter is gone. Uh, someone has kidnapped her and this whole book is trying to figure out why and what the motive was. I did not like this book. I gave this book one star. Um, basically to me, something didn't sit well with me <laughs> with this book. Um, I did listen to this via my library because it was available and oh my god it was frustrating. Um, basically to me it very much felt like everything hinged on people making assumptions about one another and then everyone going into those assumptions. Like basically they proved their assumptions correct. And I didn't particularly like that. Um, I also just had like, so I am not a mother. I don't know what postpartum depression feels like at all. And this, I felt like this book was trying to normalize postpartum depression, but then it felt like it canceled it out because I am getting a, the a wife was uh, mentally unstable beforehand. And she also hid her postpartum depression. So it's like, I don't, I felt like it was counterintuitive. Um, but ultimately I am, I don't know if it's just me getting frustrated at every domestic thriller making the wife mentally unstable. I don't know. Um, not like I read a whole lot of domestic thrillers, but like already I'm just like, I'm done with this book. Um, I didn't like it. I will be unhauling this. Uh, this next one is a graphic novel and I did not, do not have a rating for it yet. And that is, um, the Pemmican, or A Girl Called Echo Volume 1, The Pemmican Wars by Katharina Vermet, who is Matisse. And this is about a Matisse teenager who is in a new home. She's at a new school and she's dealing with loneliness. Um, but then she is going to her history class and she's, finding herself transported into different periods of time. So she wakes up and she's um, on a buffalo hunt in, on the Saskatchewan prairie. And then she wakes up again and she's in the present. So I think this one in particular sets it up real nicely for the rest of the series. However, I wish there was more information. Um, in terms of dialogue, there was hardly anything. It was a lot of um, panels of art of what was happening, which I didn't mind. It was beautiful. But it's like, I wish there was more content, but it does still set it up nicely for the rest of the series. I feel like it's un I feel like I didn't get enough information in this first book one to really like put a rating on it. Um, I do hope to get more of the volumes and um, rate the whole se the series as a whole eventually. This next book I also found um, available at my library. It's another mystery thriller, Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. This follows, I always forget his name, Malcolm Kershaw. He is a, he works at a bookstore that specializes in mystery thrillers or murder mysteries. At the start of his job at this particular bookstore, he did a blog post about his eight perfect murders in murder mystery books. Basically a list of murders that would have been considered perfect as in the murderer wouldn't have gotten caught on a list. So it has a variety of different, like this is a book about books. There's a variety of other um, books named in here, murder mystery books, um, there's yeah so then an FBI agent comes by years later and asks him about this list because she believes that someone is replicating it they are they are replicating the murders that he had listed and she's enlisting his help to try to figure out how to spot those murders as the whole point it was so that to the whole 
thing was that some of these murders uh, are made to look like accidents. Um, Malcolm has secrets of his own that she hopes she doesn't find out. This was really interesting. I didn't, I have wanted to read this for a while, about 20% into the audiobook I purchased a physical copy because I thought the narration in itself was really just well written. Um, there was a couple of elements that I was just like, oh, beautiful. And I wanted to be able to look back on it. Um, the narrator of the audiobook in general, I don't know if it's the, the audiobook. I want to reread this physically eventually because I'm just curious about this. It's not because I didn't like or dislike the narrator, um, audibly. It's just the narrator himself, Ram Helsteed. And I don't know if it was him or just the tonality of the narration it sounded like a friend of mine. Like throughout the whole book, I was like, this sounds like Dakota. <laughs> so yeah, it was just, it was funny and interesting. And that's mostly, I was just like, I can see him saying some of these things, but I really appreciated this book. I thought it was really interesting and unique. I gave this 4.5 out of five stars. There was like a couple things that was just like, eh, this next book. Uh, I actually started back in August and put it down because I wanted to prioritize my TBRs at the time. Um, and I found that, uh, Indigathon was the perfect time to pick it back up. And that is Winter Counts by David Heska Wandley Whedon. I was, buddy read this with Kim over at Native Book Lady Warrior. Um, <laughs> sorry, I always think I'm going to get that messed up. But this one follows Virgil Wounded Horse, who is the Rosebud Reservation vigilante of sorts. So when tribal police aren't able to issue any justice or the FBI ignores a crime, um, Virgil is the one they call to issue that justice. So when hard drugs are being found on the reservation, Virgil doesn't want anything to do with it. Um, he figures that things are going to end up winding up on the reservation. However, when his nephew, who he's been taking care of for a while, ends up overdosing on some of these hard drugs, Virgil takes it personally and is determined to find out who's bringing these hard drugs on the reservation and to stop them. I really appreciate this book. I tabbed it up to no end. Um, well, obviously to a certain end because I ran out of tabs. <laughs> Um, I also ended up just getting, so I do have to say that it kind of gets a little slow in here and by about this point picks back up to the point where I was just solely focused on the book's content as opposed to what I wanted to highlight. A lot of these tabs are for that of like making note of some of the books that are mentioned in here that I want to eventually read or the comparisons to the Rosebud Reservation comparatively to the reservations here locally. I really appreciated Whedon's going into detail about the jurisdictions between tribal police and federal agents or the FBI uh, just because it can get complicated. I know that here locally we had some issues between the tribal police and the county comparatively to federal because reservations are federal property or federal um, they're under federal jurisdiction, so the state doesn't tend to have anything to do with them. However, a lot of, uh, I know the tribes around here have to work with the county and able to get their tribal police deputized. So it's really interesting, particularly, um, I know that during the pandemic, one of the reservations had wanted, a couple of the reservations had wanted to completely shut down and not allow any visitors or access to anyone outside the tribe. Uh, unfortunately, legally they can't do that because most of the reservations around here have a state highway running through them so that creates an interesting jurisdiction and i so i appreciate it reading talking about it i'm not going to talk too much about this because i still need to chat with kim and i want to like discuss with her uh, and i hope to put up a review of this book here shortly however i do want to let you know that this it has a very good points and very good discussion topics and I hope to talk more about it soon. I gave it a four out of five stars. The next book is 
How I Became a Ghost by Tim Tingle. This is a Choctaw Trail of Tears story for young adults. Holy cow, I read this in one sitting. Um, this is another one I don't plan to talk too much about because there is a second book to this and I hope to read it, uh, get it and read it eventually so I can do a full review of both of them. Tim Tingle is Choctaw. This is a Choctaw story and basically we're following a young boy who is on the trail of tears and knows he's going to become a ghost. Bear that in mind. I don't know if it was just the timing of me reading this. It was like two in the morning and I finished it in one go, but I cried through like half of this book and it's not a very big book. I tabbed it up slightly. <sighs> Yeah, this was intense, mostly because there are things that start happening that the narrator isn't quite aware of, but if you know any history, you know what's happening, and it's heartbreaking. Tense and fairly interesting, and I can't wait to get to the second one. And the last book that I read for November is The Night Swim by Megan Golden. This was another mystery thriller that was available through my library and relatively recent. I was actually very pleasantly surprised that a 2020 release was available through my library, particularly a popular one like this. <laughs> so this one follows Rachel Crawl, who is a podcast host for a true crime podcast. Um, it's called Guilty or Not Guilty, where she puts her audiences in the juror's box to figure out if a particular person, defendant, is guilty or not guilty. In her previous episodes, she goes through cold cases, or not cold cases, but like um, already done trials. However, in her new season, she's going to a town on the East Coast, a smallish town where a trial is about to start, and she is going is post going to be posting um, every day of what's happening in this trial. This trial in particular is uh, fairly big news in these, this small town as it involves like the town's well-known superstar uh, swimmer and he is accused of being uh, being a rapist. So there's this huge discussion on if the girl just made some bad decisions because she was partying that night and if she just regrets what she was, what she did versus um, him being an actual rapist. So uh, while Rachel is covering this trial, someone is getting a hold of her through letters, which she finds uh, disturbing because she has, Rachel has tried her hardest to make sure that her anonymity stays in check um, going into this town. But these letters are asking Rachel for her help. We're getting like a couple of perspectives. We're getting Rachel's in real time as she's covering this trial and kind of going through her day-to-day -day processes. We also get her podcast, which this audiobook is really, does really well of conveying. And then we also get these letters who is telling her backstory of why she needs Rachel's help. It was really intense. I really appreciated the discussions that came out of this book or like the questions. Particularly, um, really appreciated the fact that we know for sure that murder is wrong, but when it comes to rape, there's why is it so so much a gray area? Why is there so much gray area and people going, well, but, or whatever. I thought that was really interesting. I also thought it was really interesting in the fact that uh, the same question can be brought up in terms of stalking. There were a couple aspects of it that I was just like, what? But otherwise it was a pretty intense book. I really did appreciate it. So that was what I read in November. Um, this was what I have left of my Indigathon TBR. I am currently reading Race to the Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is Milgrade following Nahoni Begay who can see monsters and she believes that her father is about to work for one and she is going to try to stop that. So it is one that I hope to finish in December. I did hit 64 books for my uh, yearly goals which is far exceeding what I had originally put down. I put down 45 originally um, last January because I had the intention of reading more tomes. And though I have read a couple of them, The Diviners, um, Inheritance and Finish the Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Poloni. I can't recall if Black Sun is a tome. Um, <laughs> I haven't read nearly as much as I had originally wanted to. 
However, being at 64 books right now, like, while in the past I've had 60 as my goal before and have struggled to meet that, I am beyond excited. I have let myself kind of just like take my time, hence why I kind of want to just relax this uh, December. But I've also just kind of like feel more confident and comfortable with picking up another tome. And so I have started reading Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King and Owen King. Something is going on with women. Um, this is set in the future where there's some kind of sickness going around and it's only affecting women. Women are falling asleep and they get this gauzy white stuff all over them. And if that gets disrupted at all, these women turn feral. That's all I know about it. That's all I want to know going into it. So far, it's relatively interesting. I am not that far at all. <laughs> I'm probably like only that far into it. But so far it's interesting. I am listening to it via my library because it was available. It is 25 hours long and I only read at 1.25 speed. I've had this for a while and I'm really interested to know what I think about it because I have heard nothing about this book on booktube despite how uh, Stephen King heavy it can get. So honestly, this is probably going to be my only Stephen King book that I read. This is the only one I have been interested in. So that is what I have read within the month of November. If you have read any of these, uh, let me know what your thoughts were um, in the description down below. Please no spoilers. If you want to chat with me on any other platform, I am on Instagram, Twitter, or Goodreads. I am most active on Instagram. Social injustices are still going on right now. I have highlighted in my description down below, Missing Murdered Indigenous Women, Girls, and Two-Spirit. This has been a consistent movement um, to make it so that Everyone is aware of the uh, staggering number of missing and murdered indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit folks um, that disappear, that are missing, murdered um, more often than not. Um, they are the highest, um, highest stat, like statistically highest um, to be murdered and missing in the U.S. Um, I'm not too sure about Canada, but I do have a couple of Canadian links down in the description down below as well talking about these issues. Just because I have this highlighted though doesn't mean that's the only social injustice going on. Please do your research, share, like, and donate where you can. The pandemic is still going on. Please wash your hands and wear your mask if you go out. Otherwise, stay in, stay cozy, stay warm. I hope that you are in the mental mindset to enjoy your reading and I will talk to you again soon. Chill.